airborne again, but this time we focus our attention on the aircraft. In recent years, there have been so many developments and remarkable achievements in this industry that we tend to forget the months and sometimes years of research and testing before an aircraft's maiden flight. And although occasional vague references to engine failure and metal fatigue remind us of the risks that still exist, one part of the plane that's always taken for granted is the tyres. Damage to tyres could be disastrous, and so to see why this practically never happens, we go now to Birmingham, where at one of the world's largest rubber factories, we can see a cross-section of the tests that are carried out. The raw and processed materials have already been exhaustively tested during the manufacturing stage. Now the finished tyre is exposed to all the rigours, considerably magnified, it might eventually have to withstand. The camber drum test, for example, simulates the effect of stresses and strains of a crosswind landing. You'll notice at intervals, tyre temperatures are recorded, but in fact the test is continued until destruction has been achieved. Then a post-mortem is held to discover any weaknesses in the structure. Actually, this test was introduced prior to the last war, when most planes had three wheels, compared with as many as 18 now. So that although the danger is no longer as great, it's still used mainly to find ways of building added strength. The apparatus used for another intriguing performance, the impact test, has also stood the test of time, and yet is still constantly proving its value. For as these backroom boys have discovered, the materials used in tyre manufacture may change, but fundamental problems don't. That ominous looking spike is not meant to puncture the tyre, but rather to give the hammer effect that is responsible for little known concussion failure a burst that is not immediately obvious. Now it crashes down with a load of several tons. Finally, a tire and brake test is carried out on a large inertia flywheel, which simulates speeds of up to 200 miles an hour a great deal faster than normal landing speeds. The pressure of the tyre against the flywheel can represent an aircraft weighing up to 70,000 pounds. The wheel is hoisted into place prior to the machinery being set in motion. When the flywheel attains the required speed, the brake on the aeroplane wheel will be applied until the flywheel is brought to rest. The time taken to do this is the measure of the braking efficiency. And so the tests go on, the researchers never flagging in their efforts to still improve the efficiency of tyres and wheels. Incredibly enough, despite their efforts, the tyres of a jet fighter might be replaced after only 30 landings. Those of an airliner, though, last a hundred times as long, a tribute to these backroom boys. <laughs>